Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co and screen reads on shanshanacting.com. Today we're going to review Black Widow. It all started. So this is a film by Kate Shortland. She's a director. Time is 2 hours 13 minutes. A little long, but you have a lot of characters. Superhero movies tend to be a little bit longer, so I guess that works. It didn't feel any dead time there in the movie. You have Scarlett Johansson. She plays Black Widow again. And her origin story, Natasha Romanoff. Florence Pug plays Yelena Belova, her estranged sister. Rachel Weiss plays Melina, the mother of Black Widow when she's younger. David Harbour plays Alexi, the father of Natasha when she's younger. Ray Winstone plays Drakoff, this sinister character behind the scenes. So it starts off these daughters are living in Ohio, they're playing in the yard, and then their mother rushes them in. It's like, oh, we got to get out of here. And they're like, what do you mean? We got to go back to our home. And you're like, they're already at home, right? <laughs> so they start fleeing, and, and the father pulls that AK-47, shooting all these cops down. And you're like, what the hell is going on, right? And they fly to the country, land in Cuba. You're like, ah. <laughs> So it turns out they're kind of KGB-style operatives. Then the daughters are whisked away into this assassination program and kind of split up, so they their whole family thing kind of falls apart. But it was a fake story anyway. But it's a really great story. And then you flash forward 20 years. Black Widow is Natasha, one of the two daughters that came out of this fake KGB family that infiltrated America. And she had obviously joined Avengers, and then the Avengers have kind of broken up or something. And this is kind of a side story, only Natasha. And someone's trying to kill her, and she kind of retreats off to, I think, Norway or Sweden. And they find her there, and they're trying to get this uh, secret potions that she's been delivered by her sister. And then so it turns out they're trying to investigate why are they being hunted down. And it turns out there's this Drakoff behind the scenes he's after trying to kill them ruthlessly with his team of uh, women assassins. So story-wise, I really liked it. I think it flows really well together. It's definitely, you don't know where the story's going through the whole story. If you've read probably the comics, you probably do. But I haven't read the comics that much. I've read mostly Batman. I knew the whole complete Batman when I was younger. And a couple other comics, but that was about it. It was just Batman. The rest, I'm like, whatever. And there's literally hundreds and hundreds of comic books. So I did like stories like comics, but I didn't get totally into The Black Widow. I think it probably appeals more to girls, obviously, when you're growing up. You got a nice superhero for girls. Because when you're a boy, you're just stereotypical. Like, let's see, the male heroes. Who cares about the women hero? You know about Wonder Woman. That's about it, right? <laughs> So my understanding of Black Widow is very just Marvel movies only. But yeah, I liked how the movie moved along. It moves, flows pretty well. You don't know why she's being hunted down. And slowly kind of, you peel back the onion as the story develops of why this character, Drakoff, who lives in the Red Room, which is a secret kind of KGB style base who's training assassins, is after her. These assassinations are working, they're being mind controlled so they can't even fight their own instructions basically. So it's a pretty interesting concept. Definitely comic book style plot. You know, I went in the movie blind. I didn't want to see hardly any of the commercials. I probably saw a few commercials here and there, but I didn't really study them because I hate that. Nowadays, they kind of give away the plot and a lot of the marketing. I don't know if that was the case with Black Widow. I just knew it was coming out. And I just ignored all the marketing. So when I go into a movie, I'm always on my phone for the whole marketing. And then I watch the movie, right? Because <laughs> it's like, I just want to know just a snippet, snippet, snippet of the movie. I really don't want to see the trailer at all. Obviously, trailers are the classical way to sell people on the movie. So most people see the trailer. It doesn't bother them, I guess. But for me, it just drives me nuts. So I really like to go in blind as possible. You get a much better feel for the story. So one of the key concepts is all these assassins that are coming after are always female. And you're like, why aren't they using male assassins as well? Why would you train only a team of women assassins? So that's a little bit strange out of the bat, but I think that's one of the key concepts behind the Black Widow, and she's obviously one of them. Originally, in a previous life, so they would have these team of Black Widows, but there's nothing... In the training, they don't really show them. They only show them physically fighting. They don't show any of the... Probably in a real scenario, like I think a more realistic version of female assassins was in Red Sparrow. And in Red Sparrow, the women are taught physical fighting obviously but also sexual seduction so you have the two combination skills and that's more of a probably like a way you would actually use a female spy you would use them probably to infiltrate sexually seduce the guy and then maybe poison him or something that's the real assassin right so this is kind of this comic book version and it's physical only and maybe it's shown to more of a pg audience so they clean it up and they don't have that part, but I think that would be more a realistic version of Black Widow, would be more of the Red Sparrow version. You don't have to make it as gritty as Red Sparrow. I thought Red Sparrow was a little bit too gritty. Like, 
if you ever see Reservoir Dogs, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, I don't, don't want to know all those. You know, I don't want to know that it's a James Bond girl, but I don't want to know like. I don't know, Red Sparrow just had this really kind of distasteful look at seducing as kind of a job, which it really is in that role, but it just kind of, they, they laid out bare versus kind of the romanticism, romanticized version that was in James Bond, which I really liked a lot as a kid. And probably that's kind of how males like to envision women, you know, you either save them or they're these seductress, you know, kind of, you know, these stereotypes that are really fun for kids when you're growing up as far as you know, in a fictionalized version, right? I like the hideaway for the Red Room. It's really cool because they're trying to find this Red Room and they're going all over the world. They don't really have any clues and it turns out the Red Room's actually in the clouds. It's a spaceship. And obviously in the Avengers, they have a skyship as well. So it's not, it's definitely within the realm of Marvel comic book world. This probably would have been unbelievable if they'd done the movie, say in the 90s. Obviously the CGI would be extremely exorbitant. So back in the 90s before kind of Stanley broke in and sold Hollywood on doing these type of films, you know, they were just like, ah, we'll do Spider-Man, we'll do Superman, we'll do like two movies of it, we'll shoot Spider-Man over and over again, the same stupid story. <laughs> which they always shot Spider-Man is like Peter Parker gets bit by a spider and that's the backstory of Spider-Man but why don't you just do other Spider-Mans besides the original core story and it was just always super annoying to watch Spider-Man and they would always do him versus same villains the same with Batman it was always against the Joker half the time you're like there's other freaking villains besides Joker man <laughs> Like, even when they did Two-Face in the Batman, they freaking pulled in some other stupid villain. You're like, no, just use Two-Face. You don't need three villains. You just need one villain, right? But completely stupid. I mean, in the comics, they definitely do have multiple kind of superhero team-ups and villain team-ups, so it's not unheard of. But from a movie perspective, it's much stronger if you just have one villain, maybe two villains, right? You don't want too many villains. It's just, it's much stronger. In this film, they just have the Widows, you know, by this Drakoff character. So that's a really strong villain way to sell the story. I like the idea that this is kind of a spinoff from the original Avengers. Like you have Black, the backstory and the whole Black Widow, which is really cool. A little bit unbelievable that the Avengers was split apart, but if you read the real comic books, that's kind of what happens. They would split apart. The Avengers would have, you know, a falling out and there would be different team members fighting each other even. So that's not unheard of. So this is kind of a, you know, really falls into the classic comic book story world and it's really fun to explore because you see like a whole character you already kind of been, been introduced to it would have been better to show this first before you've seen all the avengers come together as the avengers ideally you would explain all those characters first but you know there's just there's only so many stories you can spin and some stories are more sellable i think like spider-man's obviously more sellable iron man's more sellable separate so they kind of did the big characters they knew would kind of do well first and then now they've done more of the more tangent characters like they're going to do Hawkeye and they're going to do Black Widow. And those characters you probably couldn't have done first because people would be like, most people would be like, I don't even know who they are unless they're a comic book fan. And they're probably, that was small versus the general population. So it's kind of, they've introduced all those characters through all the different major Avengers movies. So now they can kind of do the spin-off movies. And I think Marvel in general is in a way better version than DC. DC's trying to kind of copy the Marvel world, but they didn't have kind of the Stan Lee behind the story where he was the actual creator of the stories and editor. And Stan Lee was able to kind of keep Hollywood on track as far as shooting the films in the right sequence and having some kind of say in how those films kind of came together and kind of true to the original story as much as possible. And DC's kind of been all over the map. They're, you know, shooting Wonder World and Wonder Woman. And the second Wonder Woman was kind of like, eh. You know, it was a little bit too... Um, too much of a feminine twist, I'd say. They didn't really stick to the core of what Wonder Woman made good, and they brought back the guy who died in the original Wonder Woman. You're like, that doesn't make any sense. So, <laughs> deeply flawed film, right? And they kind of screwed up the second Wonder Woman. You're like, how did you screw it up? You had a perfect Wonder Woman 1. Why did you not have a good Wonder Woman 2? You know, it's, it's kind of disappointing in a way. But this film, I think, it definitely lives up to another Marvel movie. So, great job there. The only controversy, I think, is... The villain is called Taskmaster, and it's kind of the lead assassin that's after Natasha, Black Widow. In the original comics, Taskmaster is a male, and so they've changed it a little bit, so it's Drakoff's daughter, and she's been severely injured by Black Widow, which gets to the whole reason why Drakoff is hunting Black Widow. So it, from a movie standpoint, it's perfect. And for a movie, you know, they're looking at... There's literally like 50, 60 different comic book versions of what happens to Black Widow in the comics. And this is the movie world. They're probably going to make one, maybe two, maybe three, but I doubt it. They probably make two movies, maybe just this one movie. So you kind of have to boil down a lot of the stories into a reasonable 
movie world and you're just limited to what you can cover in a movie and so you kind of blend certain characters to kind of make a movie come together and so for me it works perfectly fine but i didn't know about the controversy of taskmaster going into the film so to me it wasn't a controversy at all it just made perfect sense from a movie standpoint from a comic book i could see the fans were pretty disappointed but there's the lots and lots and lots of weird stories about Black Widow, like in some story, she was a zombie and ate a dog, right? They're probably never going to show that in a movie. Have a female lead eat the dog. It would just be way off the deep end controversial. But you can do that in a comics book, but you can't do that in a movie. So there's certain sacrifices you have to make in the film, and I think it works. I'd say it's a really fun movie. I don't know if you're going to see it more than maybe twice, but it's really fun. I think it comes together really well. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd like to subscribe below. And hope to see you in the next movie review. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah.